So example seven is similar to example six, but here we are having a couple of uh, uh, different factors. One of them is that we are having actually a three product uh, trees here. In fact, they are two, but they are shown as single level product trees. So we are having a product A that has uh, two components B and C, F has two components C and D, and C has two components D and E. So we could say that we could show it something like this as well. C has two components D and D, and here as well. But it has been shown as a single level bill of material. So apart from that, A has two gross requirements in this case in week three and week five. F has a gross requirement of 100 in week four. There is a certain quantity of B available. There is a certain quantity of E available. And you could see that lead time in some cases is one week. Here it is two weeks for B and C, two weeks for D and three weeks for E. Lot sizing policy for A is lot for lot, for F it, it is lot for lot as well, for B it is a lot size of 300, for C it is lot for lot, and for D it is 300, and for E it is 500. So a number of factors have to be considered in this case. But overall the logic and methodology is exactly the same. So we are having no projected available of A in the previous week. So whatever are the gross requirements will simply be the net requirements. So we are having net requirements of 60 in week three and 70 in week five. And there is a lead time of one week. So we will have actually the plan order receipt of 70 here and 60 here and corresponding plan order release one week earlier. So this is quite simple for A. Now F is also an independent item or you could say the final product just like A. It is not a component. So both these demands, this gross requirement for A as well as for F is coming from MPS. So that should be kept in mind. So the gross requirement of the final assembly comes from MPS. Now there is no inventory available for F as well. So whatever are the gross requirements will be uh, the net requirements as well. And we need to have a plan order receipt of 100 because lot sizing policy here also is lot for lot. The lead time is one week. So order will be placed one week earlier. So it was quite simple for A and F because order policy was lot for lot and we didn't have any inventory available for these items. Now you should pay some attention for B because B is a component and it is a component of A and one B is required for each A. So we simply will have this 60 here and just recall that the gross requirements of the component come from plan order release of its parent. And that means that we have to start the production of 60A in week two. So we need to have 60 Bs available by the start of week two. And similarly, we have to start a production of say 70 A's. So we need to have 70 A's available at the beginning of week four. So that is the basic idea. So that is why we are saying that the gross requirement of the component come from the plant or the release of its parent because the production of that parent product or component has to start in that week. So its component should be available at the start of that week. Now we have 200 bees available already. So we do not have any requirements. So we will have those 200 available by the end of week one as well. Now the net requirements in week two will also be zero because the inventory is more, that is 200 than the requirement of 
60. So we can meet that requirement of 60 and still we will be left with 140. So we do not have any requirement in week three. So there will be no net requirements and we will carry on with this inventory of 140 in week three as well. And again, the supply of this 140 is greater than the requirements of 170. So we are having no net requirements in week four as well. And after meeting this demand of 70, we will be left with 140 minus 70, 70 items. And we will carry those 70 items in week five. And of course, uh, they will be available in week six as well when we carry on with this uh, planning. So there is no plan order release uh, for part B. But if there was any plan order uh, release, it would be a quantity of 300. But in this case, we didn't have that. So that is part B. So we are done with part B. Uh, now the part C. Uh, part C is important because it is a component of A as well as F. So its requirement will come from A as well as F. And you could see that two Cs are required for each A. So requirement will double. So from this 60, actually, uh, we will be having a 120 here in this week. And from this 70, we will be having uh, 140 in week four. So that is the requirement of C coming from A because two Cs are required for each A. And one C is required for each F. So we will have the requirement of C from F as well. So the planned order release for F is of 100 in week three. So we will have that 100 here. So we are having gross requirement of C in three weeks, week two, week three, and week four, and week two and week four requirement. This 120 and 140 is coming from parent A, and this 100 is coming from F. So that is something that we have done. Now, of course, there is no inventory available uh, for C no requirement in week one. So in week two, we are having a net requirement of zero because we are having a 120 available. So we are not having any safety stock. The order policy is lot for lot. Uh, but in week, uh, week two, after meeting the requirement of 120, there is no net requirement. So meeting a gross requirement of 120, we will be left with a projected available of zero. Now in week three, we have a net requirement of 100. So order policy is lot for lot. So we do need to have a plan order receipt of 100. And the lead time is two weeks. So an order of 100 will be placed two weeks earlier. So that will be in week one. So we will have nothing left by the end of week three as well. So there are net requirements of 140 in week uh, four. Then order receipt of 140 because we are having lot for lot uh, ordering policy. So an order of 140 will be placed at the beginning of week two. And that will be received at the beginning of week four. And of course, there are no requirements uh, in week five in this case. And then we are having uh, this uh, component D. D. So from where does the demand of D come? The demand for D. Now D is a component of C. It's also a component of uh, F. So first we will have a look at C. So that is straightforward that uh, one C is actually required for 
sorry, 1D is actually required for each C. So you could see this third uh, bill of material that 1D is required for each C. So we will have this 100 and 140 from this C, plan order release of C as it is 100 and 140. And each F requires two of these. So planned order release of F, this 100. So from this 100, we will have 200 here. So we are having uh, three gross requirements for, for part D in week one, week two, and week three. Week one and two requirements are coming from C and week three requirement is coming from F. And we are multiplying by two because two Ds are required for each F. Now here the lot size policy is 300. So that should be kept in mind as well. But there are no net requirements in week one and after meeting the demand of 100, we will be left with 200. And after meeting the demand of 140 uh, in week two, we will be left with 60. So no net requirements in week three and we will be left with 60 here as well. Now we do have positive net requirements, 200 minus 60 is 140 in week three. So we do need to have a plan order receipt of 300 because large size policy is 300 and plan order release will be in week one because a lead time is two weeks. So what is on hand in this case, that is 60 plus 300, 360 minus 200. So we will be left with 160 by the end of week three and we will carry this 160 to week four, week five and week six as well. And finally, we have component E, the party e, that is the component of C and one E is required for each C. So its requirement will come from C. So that is this 100 and 140. So we'll have uh, these two quantities as it is. So that will be 100 in week one and 140 in week two. So we have already 400 is available. So after meeting the demand of 100, we will be left with 300 because there are no net requirements, no net requirements in week two as well. After meeting this demand, we will be left with 160 and we will carry those 160 to week three, four, five, as well as week six. But if we had any any requirements in this case, then we will be placing an order of 500. So what is the result of all this activity? That is the last row in each matrix. So we are having uh, a plan order release of 60 and 70 in week two and four respectively for A, a planned order release of 100 for F in week three, no plan order release for B, a plan order release of 100 and 140 in week one and two respectively for C, a plan order release of 300 for D and no plan order release for E. If you have any questions, you can ask.